Hi everyone, and welcome back to Stay Tuned for Danger. So last video, we found our way into worldwide broadcasting at night and snooped through Lillian Weiss's office. We found some evidence that ties back a worker named Owen W. Spader to the fallen Klieg light that almost crushed Rick. And then we also found this security log that matches perfectly with the times that Owen W. Spader clocked in to work and was around the studio, so we need to figure out who this Owen W. Spader is. So we are going to head on back to Maddie's apartment so that we can come back to the studio at night and start interrogating some people. That's what I love to do. Love to be intrusive. But luckily this isn't a very intrusive question. It's just who in the world is this guy? All right, so we're gonna check back in with Ralph. And we're gonna start at the end with Millie Strathorn and then work our way up to Rick. Because that's just convenience right there. Just go boom, 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 everybody in a line. Oh, whoops, I forgot I have to open the door. All right, and Lil, er, I always mix up Lillian and Millie. I don't know why I keep calling them by each other's names. But anyways, Millie is congratulating us on saving Rick Danner, who she is. Rick Danner. <laughs> Rick Arlen, who she's confusing with Rory Danner, his character's name. So we're going to say, don't you mean Rick Arlen? And who is your, Yuri? Yuri? So she's explaining Yuri is Rory's evil twin. And it seems like Millie is living in the soap opera. Like, she's calling Rick Rory. She thinks Yuri's real. She thinks Maddie's Serena. So it really... And it seems like she's not really fond of Rick because it says that Rory Danner needs to be taught a lesson. So that's odd. So we're going to, like, kind of push her to talk more about Rick Arlen and say it must be wonderful working with him. And is it exciting? Or is he exciting in real life as he is on stage? And she has no idea who Rick Arlen is, but she is talking about Rory Danner again. Um, again, proving that she is mistaking them for their characters. And she just doesn't really seem to like him that much. She thinks that he's a troublemaker and that he needs a good swift kick in the you-know-what. And that he just causes poor Serena, a.k.a. Maddie, grief. So we're going to ask her where we can find Owen W. Spader. And she says she has yet to meet him face to face, but he signs out props all the time. So that's odd that she would have never seen him. But, you know, okay. So we're going to ask Lillian about him now. And she's still kind of snippy with us, even though we kind of saved Rick. So why would she be grouchy about us saving him? Could her plan have been foiled? We're going to ask about Owen Spader, and she refuses to talk about him because apparently it's none of our business. So, okay, Mrs. Grouchy. Man, waking up on the wrong side of the bed every day. Rough life for Lillian. All right, we're going to talk to Maddie next. And she's glad that we're okay. It feels so good to talk to somebody who cares about us. And it seems like Rick is still shrugging off the bomb scare, and he is very lax about all of this, which is odd. So we're going to ask her about Owen Spader, and she says she doesn't recall him, so she has never heard of Owen W. Spader. So this guy is really an enigma, even to his own co-workers. So we're going to talk to Rick last. And he's being creepy again, so that's great. I don't like this guy. <laughs> Gosh, we save his life and he just flirts with us. So we're going to ask if he's seen any suspicious characters around his room and he's just making fun of the police that came to try to help. So that's great. <laughs> All right, 
so we're going to ask him about Owen Spader. And he seems to know him. And he's scared that we're seeing him. Okay, Rick, calm down. Calm down. We're going to ask about Millie. And he knows that they don't have a great relationship and that she is not very fond of him. Has never liked him. So, I don't know. I think she might be onto something here. She might have a good judge of character. And then we're going to ask about Dwayne Powers since Dwayne doesn't seem to like him. And he thinks that Dwayne is a loser. So we're going to be like, didn't he represent you? And he said he did, but he was young and naive at that time. And he made a mistake. So things did not go well with Rick and Dwayne. So we're going to leave him. And guess what's next? We are going to come back at night, not to worldwide broadcasting, but now we are going to snoop through Dwayne Powers things because we don't want to leave anybody left out. So we are going to go back to Maddie Jensen's place. Oh, we need the keys to do that. And we're going to go to sleep so we can wake up at night. I'm going to go to Dwayne Powers' office, and since he's not there, and obviously he wouldn't let us in to snoop through his stuff, you just look at one of the other names, and you press on Hess Grumbly, and it doesn't show the sound, obviously, because sound doesn't work with this game on my computer, but he thinks he mistakes us for the pizza guy, so he lets us in, but poor guy still will not get his pizza. So we're going to use our ID card to get into Dwayne's office. And we are in. Let's see, let's start out over here. It looks like he has a mag or a magazine. This is a newspaper. Um, about Rick Arlen leaving daytime television. And it says Rick Arlen, worldwide's leading daytime actor, may be in the running to play the lead role in Jocelyn Quincy's upcoming thriller Digit. WWB has refused any comment on this development, but Arlen's agency has hinted that its client is ready to break his contract with WWB. Arlen's relationship with the New York-based network has always been strained with both sides, unhappy with the terms of his contract. A lawsuit was filed against Arlen last year for a breach of agreement after his brief stint with PDM Studios. However, sources say that Arlen's agency is planning to challenge the merits of the contract with new evidence that has recently surfaced. So, guessing Dwayne's not happy about that since Dwayne was his agent. Let's see. Nothing over here. We just have a ticket stub to the angry man. Could Dwayne relate to the angry man? And then we have a book of French phrases. So maybe the love notes in French were from Dwayne to Maddie, if he's got an English to French dictionary. Could he love Maddie? That's his desk, but we're going to look over here first. Here's his wallet. It looks like he has some numbers written on here, and so write those down because guess what? That is a combination to his locked briefcase. In a picture of Dwayne and Maddie, so I'm going to take an educated guess here and say that Dwayne has a little crushy poo on Maddie, which, you know, okay, go get it, girl. Nothing in this drawer. So here's his briefcase. So the combination is four, three, seven, seven. That unlocked that side. And then six, oops, six, three, oh. And then we immediately get this pair of keys when we look in the briefcase. And right here is a check from Maddie Jensen. It's a loan for $5,000. Here we have an eviction notice from his office. So, looks like he's not doing so well financially. And it looks like he is actually in a lot of trouble, like money-wise. So, Dwayne's little business is not doing so good. And then here we have a fortune, and it's just like weirdly spaced. So it says... Even though, wait, even though 
Revenge should be sweet, jealous acts will end in defeat. Man, that's one of those Proverbs ones. It's not one of those fortune ones. I hate the Proverbs fortune cookies. Tell me I want a million dollars or something. We have Spirit Gum, which if you remember is missing from the prop room. A plane ticket to Rio, which, um, Dwayne, I thought you were in financial problems. Don't know what that's about. <laughs> the clipboard. And is it just me or does this look like a tape recorder reminiscent of the bomb? So, don't know what to think about that. And then this is just a letter. It says, from Dwayne, it says, enclosed is a current resume and a file photo for Teresia Poppenhausen. She has 10 solid years of experience in the business. Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't really matter. <laughs> and then this is an article sent from Maddie's mom to Dwayne. It says, please read the attached article and explain to me why my daughter was not invited to this panel. Maddie Jensen is a household name and an excellent role model for girls. You, on the other hand, are a horrible example of a talent agent. Also, why is it that Rick Arlen has better press coverage than Maddie does? We both know that Maddie is the real star of the show. Call me and let me know what we should do about this. So it turns out Dwayne is not even impressing Maddie's mother, so he is not doing very good at his job. So next we're going to look in his file cabinet and that's going to have some portfolios for his current clients. So here we have Owen W. Spader and it really doesn't have that much information. Just some like non-specific resume and if you notice his street is Bamboozle Drive. So is Owen W. Spader even real? And then Maddie Jensen's file. And in her skills, notice that it says firearms, which, you know, okay, Maddie, don't mess with Maddie Jensen. She's skilled in firearms. And next we have Rick Arlen. I almost called him Nick Arlen. I'm like renaming him over here. Ooh, nice. <laughs> but he was canceled, so he doesn't count here anymore. But Rick still has his file. And then here's our file. Except it's not filled out. Alright. So pretty odd. So we're going to head back on to Maddie's apartment. Now that we've seen everything in Dwayne's office. He's kind of just a train wreck. And oh! A package for us! So lucky! Oh, an alarm clock? Says, this is your final warning, Nancy Drew. You better mind your own business and go back to your little life in River Heights. I mean it. Leave town now or next time you won't be so lucky. So, why are we on the receiving end of the threats? I thought these were just for Rick. Okay, well, we're kind of on the receiving end of this too. And then, I'm just going to click the phone because, okay. We're supposed to be expecting a phone call, so let's try to go to Worldwide Broadcasting first. Because we're supposed to receive a phone call that allows us to continue the game. And I would really appreciate getting that phone call. So let's see if we can talk to anybody else. I don't think we can talk anymore to Lily. Lillian and Millie. Oh my gosh, this is so difficult for me. Okay, can't talk to Maddie. Let's see if we can talk to Rick. I don't think so. I think we've exhausted all of our conversations. Oh my gosh, I can't even deal with Rick. Man, he's being really unbearable for us trying to help him. Let's go back to the apartment. Click on that phone. Dang! Okay, this means that I missed something. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Oh, I know. I know what I'm missing. Okay. Sorry. Okay, we got that security tape back in the control booth and we haven't watched it yet. That's what. So, where's the remote? Here it is. I always forget this. And then it's the red videotape. 
So they are security cameras of a suspicious figure in the halls of worldwide broadcasting. Who on earth could be creeping so unsubtly? Unsubtly? I don't know. Unsubtly. I think that's how you say it. Like, look at that walk. I don't know if it's fierce or just a sneaky walk. It looks like they are headed right to the prop room. But why? Could that be Owen W. Spader? Or again, does he just not even exist? Okay, let me click the phone again. Dang it. Okay, let me leave and then click the phone again. So we'll like go to this and then go back to Maddie's apartment. Because we've done everything. Oh, we're not. <laughs> okay, let's like go talk to people. Maybe we have to actually like get out and then come back. If not, I genuinely have no idea what I'm missing. <laughs> and then what's just... It's just me trying to figure it out. It's, okay, no, I don't think we can talk to anybody else. Gosh, I don't like games like this where, like, you have to look at everything. Okay. I'm lost. If you phone a friend... Oh my gosh, it's not even going to show us the phone conversations. Wait, maybe it will. I am so sorry. Usually, again, I am so good at just getting through this. Nope, we can't. So we're just stuck until we figure out what the heck to do. Maybe if we, like, leave at night. <gasps> Wait, phone conversations don't register in the game. I totally forgot. Okay, so I'm, like, half nervous that in reality... It never happened. Anyways, we're supposed to get a phone call from Lillian, and she's telling us to meet her at the studio at night, and she knows that we'll have no problem getting in. So she knows that we know how to get into that studio at night. So what on earth are we supposed to meet Lillian about? Anyways, I'm going to double check that that's what's going to happen next, just so the next video it's not more of this. So thank you for being patient because I love this game with no sound. The next video, we are going to meet Lillian at the studio and get to the bottom of who is sending these threats to Rick. And it is the last video next. So definitely stay tuned for danger. Figure out what the heck is up with Lillian's little secret meeting. And thank you for watching.